first we're going to take a look at the equipment that we're going to need to go through this process. The first thing that we're going to do is, is take our sieves. We have a range of sieves in different sizes, this one being a 16mm, this a 4mm and this has a 0.5mm grid in it. This is to make sure that we don't lose any of the animals through the final sieve and this is the most important. We also have a tray underneath which will help us when we're transporting the sieves to make sure that we don't lose any of the animals out of the bottom. In addition to your sieves, you're going to need the equipment that you're going to use for when you sort through your sample. So you'll need a jug of water, well probably several jugs of water, um, for getting the sample into the tray and then also for pu putting into your dishes afterwards. The dishes that we use um, are the triple vented Petri dishes, but you can use other kinds of Petri dishes. We just find this easiest. We have eight dishes here so that you can separate into your eight groups. I've also got a couple of pairs of tweezers. Now it is down to your personal preference as to which you use. I personally prefer to use these because they've got the bend at the bottom so I can move um, the rocks and, and various things out of the way as I'm sorting. Other people prefer to use the, the straight pointed. Those are put onto a white sheet. That means that we can see everything that we've put into those dishes. It makes it a lot clearer. Our sample goes into a tray. Now we just have a bakery tray from a baker's. Um, we separate them into grids with the perspex. You might decide that you're going to work in a smaller tray and these are also really easily available. We have our magnifying lamp so that we can see everything in our tray. It gives us the light and we can also bring it down, look through the magnifier to see any of the animals that we might have missed. So this is a stereo low power microscope to times 40. Once you've collected your sample, and this is one that we collected in the Dove locally this morning, um, you're going to go through the process of cleaning and sorting. So the first step to that process is to clean. Now I'm using two of the sieves that I showed you earlier. The first one is the big one, which will get out most of the large matter. We won't lose any animals in there. Then we've got our very fine sieve, and that's going to be the one where all our animals would be collected. If we were doing a larger sample with more matter in it, then yes, we would use an additional sieve, but for this one, it's not necessary. You can also use smaller sieves if you're going to do things in batches with people in your, um, in your group. So we just pop our sieves into the sink. We need to make sure that we're in a well ventilated area because of the preservatives that we've used on our sample. And we also need to make sure that we've got our rubber gloves um, for the hand that's going to touch the sample. Uh, this is just to make sure that we keep our hands safe from anything that might be in there, sharp things or, or anything that could cause us any damage. So first things first is we just pour the sample into the sieve. Once we've made sure that we've got most of the sample out of there, we're going to use the water to rinse out the bucket and then rinse through the sample. What you'll see me doing is going through and making sure that we've rinsed all the different parts of that sample to get out as many animals as possible. We really don't want to miss anything. You might find that you just need to adjust your pressure a little bit to get more of the animals out. Now we're doing this in the lab. You can get attachments like this for your sink in the kitchen. You might want to use an outdoor tap with your hose in the garden. And if you don't have a hose attachment, that's fine. You can still do this with a jug of water. It just makes the process a little bit longer, but you'll still be able to get all the animals out. So I've rinsed through the sample. I'm just going to go through, do a hand search to make sure that I haven't lost anything that's hidden within the weed or the debris or attached itself to anything. You quite often find that gamorous and caddis will get themselves a little bit stuck. Once we've washed through that, 
can just do a little check underneath, make sure that we don't have any animals that have attached themselves to the sieve. And once we're happy with that, we can put that onto the tray, ready to finish cleaning the rest of the sample. So all we're going to do is give it another rinse through. Once you're happy that the water's running through clear, you know that you've got a clean sample. What I can do is very gently agitate the sample. Sometimes they will be a little bit dirtier and it will take them a little longer to get cleaner. You want to get as much of that dirt out as possible because that will cloud the water when you're trying to sort through later on. Right, I'm just going to let the sink clear and give it one more run through. Right, I'm happy now that that's, that water's running quite clearly through there. So now that the sample's all nice and clean, what I'm going to do is take the matter that we took out initially, pop it onto a spare tray. I can see that I haven't lost any animals in the tray here. There wasn't anything left over. And I'm just going to pop it into here and then we can take it through to our large tray ready to go and sort it. So now we need to put our sample into our tray. Because I'm doing a full sample, not a partial sample, I'm using the big tray, um, which does have grid lines in the bottom of it, although I will be using my dividers later on so that we can section out the search. It just makes it easier to make sure that you've covered every area of the tray and not lost any animals. Now, we've washed all of the preserving alcohol out of here. We just need to tip it over into the tray. And then if you're at a sink, you can do this with a hose. We're not, we're at the kitchen table, dining table, um, and so we're just going to use a jug of water to wash through. Make sure that you cover all of the area of the sieve. That will get most of the matter out, but as you can see, there's more in there. So you're just going to have to go through a process of carefully rinsing through the sieve until you've got all of your sample out into your tray. So now I've washed the sample out from the sieve. Um, I've made sure that I've got everything out from all the corners and I've put it back on the white tray just in case anything happens to have slipped through. I don't want to lose any part of my sample. So now we have the sample in the tray, we just need to make sure that it's all ready for us to start picking through it. So I've put enough water in here to make sure that the sample is fully covered. For this particular sample, which doesn't have an awful lot of matter in it, it's probably about a centimetre in depth. So all I'm going to do now is spread the sample evenly over the bottom of the tray. and that just makes sure that it's easier for, for us to see everything that's in there. The next thing that I'm going to do, which you may or may not do, depending on if you have them, is to put in Perspex dividers. Now, these were just an at-home job, Perspex from the DIY shop on a bandsaw, and we cut them to size for the tray. So I'll pop those in. All that does is put the sample into sections it makes sure that you are looking at each area thoroughly. It just makes it easier to key it down a little bit. It also means that if you are doing this in a group, then you can each take a different section. The tray is big enough to get more people around this tray. Now, I'll pop water into my Petri dishes. So that we'll be able to get a good view of the animals once we get them under the microscope. If you don't put the water in, they're just a big splodgy mess in the bottom of the Petri dish and that won't help you ID them at all. So when we go on to the sorting, what we want to be thinking about is what kinds of animals we're looking at. We're wanting to put 
like with like as much as possible. So I start my bottom corner, give myself a little clear space and start pulling out animals. Now I found some small mayfly species there. And what I'm going to do is put all of my mayfly into this dish. Now, because I've been doing it for a while, I can see when I've got my olives and then if I have something like the ephemera danica, I can put it into a different section. I know that I'm looking at mayfly, I know that that's what I'm analyzing, analyzing but it just makes sure that that splits things up a little bit. So all I'm going to do is go through carefully. I need to bring my light over, we've not got enough light over here. And I'm just gently moving away any matter that might be hiding the animals. You need to be very careful because as these have been preserved, obviously, they're no longer living and moving. You need to really get your eye in for the kind of things that you're looking for. So I've just pulled out a very small mollusk, which would be really easily missed if you weren't looking carefully. Um, we don't want to confuse anything with a piece of leaf matter or lose something because we think it's a pebble or a piece of grit. Okay, so we're just going to work our way through. Now, this is something that I do day in, day out. So it does take me less time than it will take you initially. Um, it can, on an average sample, take about half a day for me to sort through this. Now, as long as you pull everything out that you need to pull out, really don't worry about the time. The important thing is that you've got all of the animals so that we can properly an analyze this. Now, what this, at this point, what you might decide to do is you might split your sample into pieces. So when we talked about using the different size sieves earlier, you might only clean half of the sample. It will mean that you can come back to the preserved parts of your sample at a later date if you don't have the time. Once I've gone through all of my sample, what I'll do is I'll bring in the magnifier. Now you might use this for the whole sample. I don't know how your eyes are. Thankfully mine are okay at the moment. But I bring the magnifier over and it just means that I can get the extra magnification. There are certain caddis that are smaller um, and there are flatworms that you might find in your sample that you wouldn't necessarily see with the naked eye. There are things that the professionals do miss um, and, and they've been doing it you know, for a long time. So it is important that you do go through with the magnifier just to make sure that you've got all the different animals that are inside your sample. So now I'm at the point where everything's being sorted through. It's going to take me another couple of hours at least to get all of the animal, animals out of here. And um, as I say, it could take you longer. If you need to, at the end of the day, run everything through your sieve, put it back in alcohol and start again the following day. That's absolutely fine. It takes you as long as it takes you. The important thing is getting everything out of there. Um, at the end of it all, you will keep all of the material for the quality control. That will go back into the bucket and then you'll have petri dishes full of animals that you can then take to your microscope and start the identification process. You might find that by the end of a long day of sorting, you're not actually in the right frame of mind and your eyes aren't working in order to be able to um, ID all of your animals. So what you can do is you can get a small container, it can be a bucket, it can be a little jam jar, as long as it's clean, um, and you can pop the animals into the container, put some preserving alcohol into it, and then you can come back to that at a later date when you've got the time for it. Now, what you do need to remember is that Anything that you've taken out of your sample, you need to save. All of the extra material you do need to save for quality control purposes. If there is anything that you've taken out that you're really not sure about, it is vital that you take a photograph or you preserve the sample in a small pot, send it off to somebody that you know can identify that. We need to make sure that you are as supported as possible in this process and that what you are doing, because you are putting an awful lot of your own time into this, we need to make sure that what you, what you are doing is accurate. So, given all that, make sure that you save everything and then when you go away to do your identification, 
you are looking at the identification materials that you've used and you're looking at your benchmarking list and that should get you the best possible result and good luck.